Over the last few months, my viewers have sent in their embarrassing and oftentimes very, very strange and concerning confessions. So here is an hour of the most outrageous ones I've received. Enjoy. When I was eight years old, I used to spit and put different things in people's drinks, even people I didn't know, just to see if they would realize and I enjoyed watching them drink it. Sorry, I'm a bad person. You are a wrong one. You are a wrong one. George, when I was younger, I went on a camping trip and in the final night, I woke up screaming in the middle of the night, then shat myself horribly before vomiting all over my tent. I went to the porta potty and stayed there for three hours, letting it go the entire time before the rest of the camp woke up and I had to be sent home separately because of the fact I shat myself. Most of these stories have a very, very similar theme. Bodily fluids. One time I was like nine years old and I was performing on a theatre stage. This stage was pretty big and I was right at the front. All of a sudden I stopped singing and I just danced with my mouth shut and then all of a sudden I projectile vomit all over the stage and in front of the audience, which was full by the way, which can fit 1,350 people in it. So they all saw me projectile vomit, then I ran off the stage and vomited all over the stage through the next day I went to perform. Let's say I didn't even get into the theater. Hey mate, when Will was on tour in Newcastle, I pissed on the backstage door and made sure he stepped in it. Now me and my friends call him Pissy Willy. <laughs> what? This one's just got the subject line as I promise I'm a good person. When I was like six or seven, I used to piss on the rolls of toilet paper in school toilets because I like the idea of innocent people using it afterwards without knowing what I've done. I can safely say I have no regrets. That's that's grim. That's grim. I was bored one day and thought it'd be funny to steal my dad's phone and saw a message from a guy saying, I can't wait to kiss your feet and found out my dad was in a gay relationship with his best friend and they both had a foot fetish. I was so mortified I chucked my dad's phone and the screen cracked. But the thing is, it's not even like a normal like gay relationship message. It's I can't wait to kiss your feet. What a way to find out. Oh, this is going to be a good one. The time I threw up on Stephen Hawking. Hi, George. When I was 12, my family and I went to a restaurant where we saw Stephen Hawking and a couple of his carers sat on a table in front. That must be mad. Let's see Stephen Hawking in person. That must be, like, I always find it, like, when you see, like, mega celebrities in person, it's like seeing, like, a cartoon character, like, seeing, like, Homer Simpson just walk into like your line of vision. Like, I know it's not exactly a mega celebrity, but Rob I once saw Robbie from AFTV in real life and I was just absolutely starstruck. We were shocked but didn't want to make a big deal of it and be annoying, so we tried to act normal only glancing at him a couple times. This was working well till my starter came. It was chicken satay, which I didn't know at the time meant chicky in- ch chicky? Chicken in a peanut sauce. And what I also didn't know at the time was that I have a raging peanut allergy to the point where I now carry an EpiPen with me. So whilst I'm eating this food, I start feeling very ill, cringing with every bite until I couldn't force myself to eat any more. I felt so bad, I stepped out onto the patio of the restaurant to get some fresh air. Stephen Hawking's table is right next to the patio door. A couple minutes go by and mouth sweats creep in and I know I'm about to throw up. Although it was far and the nausea was overbearing, I decided to make a mad dash for the toilet as I ripped the patio door was open with determination and began to run. However, I only managed a couple of paces before my stomach erupted in the most intense diaphragm crushing projectile vomit to leave my mouth like a high pressure water fountain. It was so intense I was winded and fell to my knees and as I did I looked at the floor only to see a pair of shoes covered in sick in front of me. My first thoughts were holy shit I've just thrown up on someone but as my eyes traveled up I saw the wheelchair and the wrinkly hands on this person's lap and then thought holy shit I've just thrown up on a disabled old person. After a couple of moments I looked up fully to see my victim only to have Stephen Hawking staring back at me. I gasped in horror and as I did, another wave of vomit left my mouth and fell onto his lap utterly soaking his trousers. Oh my god, one of his carers saw this who looked like Sharon Osbourne. I don't Oh, I had an irrational fear about the time. I was about to say I don't... How, do... what? Okay. How do you have an irrational fear of Sharon Osbourne? And I was about to be like, what, what relevance does she have? But clearly. And started screaming at me with rage that brought me to tears. I started sobbing, but with every sob more sick would be deposited until I was finally dragged away. I was even got kicked out and permanently banned from the restaurant and I've never quite been able to shake off the guilt since. Oh, that's incredible. That's the best story I've heard on like, well, I was about to say this series, but it's only been two videos so far. But fucking hell, so there's gonna take something to beat that. Hi hey George, this actually pains me typing this, but I was in work last week, won't say where, but it's a clothes shop. And a lot of people were waiting for the changing room. This person kept telling me nobody was in number six. So the doors had no gaps on the bottom or top, so I couldn't see. And they were getting annoyed at me because they didn't want to wait. So I knocked and knocked, and I knocked probably about six or seven times while also shouting hello to see if anyone was in there. I got no response, so I went and got the key to open it. You can't open the doors without one, and opened it. Tell me why I 
girl's face with boobs in my face. I'm literally mortified. She slammed the door in my face. To make it worse, I was also on the till, so I had to serve her. I don't know. I mean, that's not really your fault. You knocked on it like six or seven times. She had the perfect opportunity to respond to you. That's, that's not your fault. It's embarrassing, but that's not your fault. Don't beat yourself up about it. You weren't in the wrong. But in year 10, I wanted to go home, so I messaged my dad saying I had shit myself, which I hadn't. And he was like, come home and get changed. So I went home and I was about to go for a piss and I realized I actually had shit myself and it was going down my leg and I, I started crying into the toilet. So you lied about shitting yourself and ended up shitting yourself. What? Hello, this story is a bit gross. I just started seeing my boyfriend at the time and we just got back from a night out. We were really hungry, so we ordered a kebab. After we finished eating, we started making out and I started going down on him. I have a sensitive gag reflex. I knew this, but when I choked, I threw up the kebab. I threw up on his dick, but worse than I sucked it back in and he never found out about it. <laughs> there is my shame. Hi, George. Hope you're well. This story happened to me when I was 13 and me and my younger sister went to this sports club where there were both guys and girls of various ages. One of them was this girl who was about two years older than me. We'll call her Emily. I had a huge crush on Emily and eventually my big brain early teen self decided the best way to tell her this was to write a fucking letter to her handmade envelope and all and sneak it into her backpack while she wasn't looking. By the way, no idea why we have one conjoined changing room. That's really weird now that I think about it. But anyway, I don't know what I was expecting, but Emily didn't respond to my letter in any way. The logical thing to do in the scenario was obviously just not do anything else, leave her alone and move on. But that's not what I did. Oh, no, 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 no. I slipped another envelope into her backpack about a month later. This one having a full-on poem about my undying my undying 13-year-old love for her. No joke, I wrote a total of 10 letters to Emily. At least three more poems, including getting more and more angry and bitter and daring not to respond to me and return my affections or whatever. What she did so was begin to completely ignore my existence. She would say hello to my sister and ignore me completely every time she talked. She was probably fucking terrified. You wrote her poems. You said a Ted letter. She was probably terrified of you. At the time, I thought somehow that she was in the wrong for this and that she just didn't appreciate how nice I was being. Oh, you're such a nice guy, man. You're so nice. Why do the ladies not like you? She also went to the same school as me, so I saw her almost every day and it filled me with incel rage. This does have a sort of happy ending, though. Three years later, after I realized how stupid, creepy, and embarrassing what I have been doing was. I reached out to Emily and apologized for my weird past behavior, which she accepted, and we were good friends for a few years until she left the school. Well, that's good. You made amends. It is still very embarrassing, though. That would haunt me. When I was in grade seven, my school sent me on a national swimming competition with hundreds of people watching, and I got second place in one of the categories. The ref raised his hand to signal us to get out of the water after the race, and I thought he was trying to high-five me for doing good, so I gave him a high-five. He looked at me like I killed someone, and everyone laughed at me. I, I, We've all been there. We've all, I once went on a date with a girl and she had her fist just like that, like that. Like, I don't know why she had it so high up. She was like that. And I thought she was got, she was giving me like, a, I don't know why I thought this. So I fist bumped her and she just gave me like most confused look ever. And I don't blame her. In year eight, I had a teacher called Mr. Uh, I'm going to blur that because, uh, for, for his privacy. And we found out that he was cheating on his wife and that he was on a dating app, Bumble. So me and my mates made an account and catfished him. And we then showed him at school that we caught him out. And he gave us two weeks of lunchtime and after school detentions and him and his wife got divorced in the end and they've sent me a picture of day in profile as if like I, I care. Sometime in year four I ate string cheese that someone had been sitting on. It was very warm and slightly melted. This wasn't a sexual thing. I was just a fat boy that wanted some cheese. Fair enough. That's not that. That's not embarrassing really. Basically I used to go to a boat with my mum and her at the time boyfriend on the canal. When this happened I was about 10. I was in my sleeping bag asleep but I was awoken by the boat violently rocking. I looked up and saw them going at it. I sat there in horror just looking at my mother on top of him saying that she needed exercise. I was absolutely mortified and did not sleep for the rest of the night. I would not sleep for the rest of my life. After this happened, the next night the same thing happened again. I was awoken by the boat rocking. I was I sat there staring at the ceiling pissed off because I was having a good sleep and decided to scream at them to stop it. After I screamed, they both went silent and my mum went silent for five minutes before asking if I wanted my Kindle. I took it and again did not sleep that night. Hello, George. Me and my girlfriend recently moved in with each other and we both have the urge to shag everywhere in the flat. So we proceed to do that, not knowing her parents plan to help 
past move in and just before I finished, I was baffled as I saw her parents standing there in utter disgust seeing their daughter getting railed against the kitchen counter. Long story short, her parents have spoken to us since then. I'm guessing you're, you meant to put haven't spoken to us since then. During the summer, my parents left me at my grandparents' house. In the evening, I was way too scared to go to the bathroom, so I pulled the carpet, pissed, then put it back. I did this for the entire summer. One time, my grandmother came into my room and she smelled it and I said that my cousin had pissed herself. She still doesn't know what I did. Surely they have to change the floorboards if you keep doing that. That's fucking dis What do you mean you're too scared to go to the bathroom? Disgusting. My mate was pissing me off, so I decided to spell wrong to nut to his mum's WhatsApp profile picture. I regret that. Why'd you have his mum's number? <laughs> no, it's his mum's WhatsApp profile. <laughs> That's revenge! Hello George, this is a very embarrassing story and it sort of reminds me of that one scene in The Inbetweeners. You will know which scene after you read this. I think I already know the scene considering that the subject line of this is my school hates me because they think I'm ableist. So last year in the Easter, we had some people coming to our school for our assembly. At the time, I had no idea it was for a special needs awareness and that a little boy who was coming in was severely disabled and he was in a wheelchair. About 10 minutes before the assembly, I asked my teacher if I could use the toilets. I tried the boys' toilets but they were locked so I went into the disabled ones. You can see where this is going. Yes, I can. I went to the disabled toilets and pulled the handle down, trying to make my way in, but someone was inside. I was bursting for a piss, so I banged on the door, holding my crotch and shouted, hurry up, you. I, I'm i not sure I'm allowed to say that word, but it begins with M and rhymes with tong. I can't hold it any longer. Then I hear the door being unlocked and my heart sinks as I see a little... What did you expect when you banged on the disabled toilet door? As I see a little disabled boy sat in his wheelchair, looking as if he is going to cry and his care worker stood in front of me looking angry. The man was furious and he shouted at me and a group of girls walked past and heard and everything. Then in the assembly they made a speech about how using discriminatory words towards people who are disabled is ableist and at the end the girls who had heard told everybody that I was ableist and the little boy agreed. So now everyone in my school thinks I bully little disabled boys and I only have two friends, my cousin and the dinner lady. How can I fix this job? <laughs> I'm sorry, that is so funny. <laughs> I, I, I empathize with you, right? But I don't know what you expected when you banged on a disabled like toilet's door and proceeded to say the word that rhymes with Tom. I don't know what you expected. I don't know how you can fix this, Matt. I, I'm sorry. I tell you what, you can show this little clip of this video to your friends and, and the school, or actually no, not your friends. You only got two of them, your cousin and the dinner lady. You can show this to people at your school and um, I think this, this is very heartfelt and it, it shows remorse, sort of. I was home alone for the first time in a while the other day and started to sing some tunes that have been stuck in my head. I'm not a singer. Turns out the upstairs window was open on my neighbor heard and thought I was screaming in pain. My singing was so bad. She let herself into my house after she couldn't get hold of me. Thinking I was gonna be dying at the bottom of the stairs or something only to find me singing some random operatic song I'd heard on TikTok in front of the mirror. Ugh. I mean, it, that is embarrassing, but in the grand scheme of things, in, in terms of just what we've looked at so far, it's not that bad. <laughs> I'm 34 and I shit myself. <laughs> In front of my kids. About four days ago on the way home from school with my kids, I was driving and all of a sudden I felt the urge to let her rip. We were maybe five minutes from home when shit started to leave from my arse my seven-year-old son told me he could smell a bad smell, which I knew was me. I didn't say it though. When we were putting into the driveway, I really couldn't hold it in. I opened the car door and, and then it all happened. I shit myself. I was kneeled over on the ground, explosively shitting while my seven-year-old son and five-year-old daughter watched in terror. They are thoroughly traumatized and never want to go in the car again. My wife doesn't know as I haven't told her, neither of the kids. It's safe to say my trousers and pants were unwearable. I had to, <laughs> and I had to hose down the driveway. I, I am using a hidden email because it's shameful. I'm not even going to show your email, so you don't need to worry about that. In my final year of school, I let off a flare in our sick form only area, which set the fire alarm off, which interrupted a GCSE English literature exam during. Why did you set a fucking flare off? What? What? Why? During this, a kid had a mental breakdown and couldn't finish the paper or the next one. I don't know what happened to the kid, but I doubt he did great. Not only that, but I planted another flare in a prefect's bag and talked about them loudly near the head of year so they would get searched, which they consented to because they genuinely knew nothing about. And last I heard, they got expelled and couldn't do their A levels at the school. Oh, Matt, they were predicting three A's and an A star. All I know is they didn't get into the university they wanted to. And honestly, good, he was a proper prick. You're a knobhead. You 
you are an absolute knobhead. So you've attached a video. I'm not downloading your file. I'm not, I'm not watching this. So for a bit of context, when I was younger, 13 slash 14, I had a really bad fear of lifts for some reason. It was so bad that whenever I stepped inside one, a paralyzing fear would chain me to the spot and I would be left awkwardly staring back at everyone in the lift. One day, my dad told me to grab some papers or something from his office. So I decided to take my friend with me. On the way up, he managed to force me into the lift and we got the papers, no problem. But on the way down, I was not having it and somehow managed him to climb down the stairs with me from the 50th floor of the building. On the way down, I felt the urge to shit myself. Right, rewind. How the how on earth did you convince someone to go down 50 floors with you? Anyway, I felt the urge to shit myself really badly. I managed to hold it in for halfway down, but then it all slowly came out and I was left there standing in a huge pool of shit. I mean, if that was me, like when I when I got that urge, I'd probably just go in the lift. I'd be like, you know, my urge to shit is greater than my fear of lifts. I'll go, I will go in the lift. My friend slipped on it and tried to grab something for support and ended up pushing me down the stairs. So what he tried to do was get me to a toilet and he opened the nearest door, ignoring the huge bolted emergency exit sign. This triggered a little mini alarm in some security office somewhere. And I guess what they had to deal with was a huge stinky liquid oozing all over the stairs we had already left by then. Uh, that is that is disgraceful. What? Hi, George. I once got really curious and decided to try to shove some Heinz beans up my ass. I love how you, um, you, you censored that as if this, that first line wasn't fucking graphic enough because I was wondering if there would be a weird sensation. <laughs> wow, what? I was wondering if there would be a weird sensation that after I was washing them out using water in the shower, then two days later, another one came out in the shower. So I think there might be some left. How long ago was this? You think there might still be some left? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> the subject of this email is anonymous, please. Yeah, I, I bet you want to be kept anonymous for this. Of course, I will honor that. I will honor that for everyone in this video. This is a safe space. <laughs> to be laughed at. So I was at the barber's last week and the barber put the neck wrap around. Oh, that is a tongue twister. So I was at the barber's last week and the barber put the neck wrap and robe on really tight. That's a tongue twister. Bear in mind, it wasn't my usual barber because he was busy with another customer. My normal barber moves my head very gently when he needs to reach different parts of my hair to cut it. But this guy straight up choked me with the robe and it caught me so off guard that I moaned in the very... <laughs> Oh, the very full job of pensioners. Needless to say, I'm finding a new barber. When I was at uni, I got a job on the return desk over Christmas, which was pure hell. People would wear clothes, cover them in spilt drinks, make up fake tan and food, and then bring them back. The amount of used underwear they would try and return is unreal. Anyway, a really arsy woman had a massive bag of returns, and it was the usual heap of clothing that had all been worn for one night out. Thrown on the floor and then into a massive bag and thrown at me. I tipped the bag onto the counter and started going through it, seeing if anything even still had the tag on. As I grabbed a screwed up dress, something else fell out of it, rolled across the counter and landed at my feet. It wasn't until I picked it up and reached my hand out to her that I realized it was a mini vibrator that had turned on when it hit the floor. I don't know which one of us died the most inside. I felt that awkward. The only thing I could say was, you can get some really good deals on rechargeable batteries at the moment, which are great for them. Have a lovely Christmas. Oh. Zero and me went on a church summer holiday camp for a week. And on one of the trips we had together was a trip to Chester Zoo. I was dripped out in some bright yellow chinos and a, and a fedora and was ready for a fedora for the zoo. Wow, you're really getting dressed up for that. Get about an hour in and notice I've got a very dodgy stomach. So I start asking random strangers where to find the toilet. It gets so dire that I have to start sprinting around the zoo looking for toilets. Eventually I found them. So I went to the toilet block, opened the cubicle door, projectile shat myself, copious amounts of brown liquid in my bright yellow chinos. We didn't even get to the toilet. Closed the door behind me and started cry understand. I would start crying too and I'm 24 years old. I had no phone so I couldn't contact anyone and I had no spare clothes. Oh, yeah, why would you take spare clothes to the zoo? You wouldn't. So he didn't. At least two people came in and audibly gagged at the stench I produced. Eventually, after about two hours, the leader of my church came in the toilets and proceeded to burst out laughing at my shitty chinos while I, I, of course, was in tears. I was given a spare pair of zookeeper trousers and driven home separately from the group. <laughs> Turns out I chat myself so bad they decided to burn my chinos rather than try to bin or wash them from some rough. I can imagine. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's incredible. This, I just realized this is like, you know, um, slap, the weekly slap that Schlapp does. This is like that, but instead of being like sincere, I'm just laughing. I'm laughing at your, your problems. You are done. Get rid of that. During the 2020 Euros, me and my mates went to the local pub to watch England versus Ukraine. We won the match and in celebration got absolutely pissed out our heads. By 8 p.m., we decided to head home to mine to join in on a family party that was going on. We left the pub and there was this bald dwarf and I must have been convinced it was someone famous. Me being very excited about this, I ran to him and shouted Danny DeVito repeatedly. My mates knew it weren't him and started recording me. I asked him to sign my England shirt from 1996, which my dad passed down to me. Earlier that day, my mate bought a Sharpie for a uni project and he gave me the pen and this man ran with it and signed right above the Umbro logo. I hate the smell of Sharpie again. I started gagging and I had sick in my mouth. Did you get him to sign the... What? If you don't like Sharpie, anyway. Me trying to hold it down and wait until he stopped signing the shirt, but I couldn't hold it anymore and I threw up all over him. It was running down his forehead. Then my mate sent the video around Snapchat and my mum got a hold. What is the video? I really want to see this video. I really want to see this video. Then my mate sent the video around Snapchat and my mum got a hold of it and she didn't speak to me for three weeks. It makes my skin. And in a similar theme to that, we've got one titled Chat in a Bucket. One time when I was still in secondary school, I really needed a shit. So I went to the toilet and we were in the sixth form building which only had one stool in the toilet that we were allowed to use. My friend came with me not knowing I was about to shit myself and she stood in the toilet and heard my shit pop in the toilet. She quickly left. I stopped my shit early and went back to lesson but my stomach hurt so badly that I went to the nurse and went home claiming I was ill. My dad picked me up and told me he was installing a new toilet so I couldn't use the toilet at home. What the fuck? Okay I guess this is where the title comes in. I had explosive diarrhea in a bucket in my kitchen and it was the lowest I have ever That's found. just sad. That's not bad Bad. It's just really, really sad. Like the last one, that was bad. You're being inconsiderate of the people that have to drink out of those cups. This one, it's just sad. It happens. Hi, George. When I was in year three slash four, Matt, you are, you'll be like seven or eight years old. Come on. You can't still be embarrassed about something you did when you were seven or eight years old. Anyway, I knew a guy in my class as a friend of a friend. And we started to get along. One time we went to the toilet together and I dared him to piss in the sink. He did. And I immediately went and snitched on him to the teacher. So you dared him to do something. No one saw this except for you. It, was, it, was, it wasn't even that mental. You dared him to piss in the sink. That's not mental. That's not mad lad activity. And then you just immediately snitch on him. Why? I'll never forget the look of betrayal on his face. Keep in mind we were nine years old tops. And I didn't talk to him afterwards for months. Ultimately when I went on my year six residential trip, me, him, my best mate and another guy shared a room together and we eventually became friends. I never mentioned the backstab again and I felt pretty bad for not apologizing. Yeah, why did you do that? There was no need for you to snitch. There was no upside to you snitching. Especially since I hadn't talked to him for over five years. P.S. Your videos are really funny. I just finished crying of laughter at one of them. Keep it up. Oh, thank you, Mr. Snitch. Unfortunately, we don't welcome grasses here on the George M channel to piss off. Subscribe if you're not a dirty snitch. Hi okay, so this the subject line of this one is the time I bust a nut on a train. All right. Hi, George. Me and my friends all support Peterborough United. I'm so sorry. And a few seasons ago, we all went to Charlton away on the train. Train. This incident occurred on the way home from London. We had won the game 1 0, so we were all pretty happy getting on the train. After about 20 minutes, I for some felt the urge to bust a nut. I think you meant to put for some reason, but anyway. So instead of waiting until I arrived home, I decided to do it in the train toilet. It turns out I hadn't locked the door properly, and if you aren't aware, the doors on trains are absolutely massive. So there I was busting a nut until some middle aged man opened the door to reveal me busting a nut to the entire carriage. The man's eyes widened and he quickly closed the door. Yeah, because you're wanking on a train. Who wanks on trains? You're a fucking, you're a deviant. You need help. I had never felt so embarrassed in my life. Good. You, that's how you're supposed to feel when you when you get caught wanking on a train. I waited a few stops before leaving the bathroom with the hope that this man and everyone else in the carriage had left. My stop was the last one. But of course, when I re-emerged from the bathroom, he was still there. And he started at, oh, he stared at me as I quickly walked off to my friends. My friends asked me what took me so long. And I just sat there in complete silence. Yeah, I hope you didn't tell your friends because they would never let you forget that. Oh, sorry, what, when I was nine, I had a crush on my older brother. It wasn't weird or anything. It was just normal. Oh, yeah, sure it was, pal. And it got to the point where I used to sneak into his room every night and fall asleep in his bed and smell his clothes and other things like that. And on my 10th birthday, I knew I'm kissing him on the lips and he slapped me across my face and called me a creep. Anyway, I'm now 19 and still kind of have a thing for him. What do I do? What the fuck? What the fuck is this? What the fuck is wrong with you? Why have you emailed this to me? This is fucked up. What the fuck? Okay, so so, you know, 
Dan and Phil, I am aware of their existence. When I was about nine, I was a mega fan of them, still am, I can't lie. And I wrote a Wattpad fan fiction about them. They were in high school, Dan got horrifically bullied and killed himself at the end of the story. I was nine and I don't know why I did that. Rough time in my life. <laughs> This is absolutely humiliating and shows how lonely I am. I'm a female. We're sitting in my new room in a shared flat. I live with my brother's slightly older friends. Weird. Why don't you live with your brother's like Anyway. The one that's kind of hot came in and we talked. He ended up sitting slash laying on the bed. We chatted for a bit and he left. After he left, I leaned over and sniffed where he had laid to see if it smelled like him. It did and I rode the pheromonal high for a bit. I got laid soon after. Thank God that is... Just, that's just really sad. Hi George, to cut to the chase, there has been a long line of incidents in my life related to me spitting on people. Why? It started when I was around five years old at a multi-story shopping center. And as usual, I had been separated from my parent and was just wandering around for some godforsaken reason. I had come across a balcony and decided to spit over the edge. Oh, everyone's done that. Everyone as a kid has done that. Because I like the sound of the saliva hitting the floor. I just did it for the, the adrenaline rush, to be honest. For a brief moment, I had a thought of, what if it hits someone and decided to spit one more time before stopping? Yet at that same moment, a bull man walks underneath and I got him smack bang in the middle of the head. I ran for the fucking hills. What's he gonna do? He probably just thought it was like rain or something or a bird. There's also another time when I was seven where I accidentally spat into someone's eye during an altercation at scout meeting and he got pink eye for weeks. Look at how vile is your spit that it gives someone pink eye for weeks? And the final time was when I was 12 and my friend dared me to eat a Jolly Rancher that was stuck to, to the carpet in one of the school corridors. That is foul on the first floor because she thought it would be funny. So I ate it and almost threw up because of the amount of hair that was on it. Are you mental? Is there something wrong with you? So I ran to an open window and spat it out, not expecting anyone to be there, except it hit and stuck to the back of a sick former who turned around and started crying. If anything, that's just more embarrassing for the sick former. Like, like at that big age, if you accidentally get, you know, like a sweet spat, you accidentally, it was obviously accidentally. And you're crying about that, grow up. Hey, Big George, this story takes place in year four when we used to walk up to a local secondary school every Friday for swimming lessons. Oh, those were always elite, like primary school swimming lessons. Goated. I was walking and talking with my mate while drinking from my bottle. One of those, I have no idea what that is. A cystamina twist and sip top bottle. I have no idea what that is. When I noticed a sick form student walking out of school behind us, I had the brilliant idea to twist my bottle into the lock position and act as if I was going to throw water over her. But I forgot one facial detail. My bottle was broken, so I ended up splashing a random sick form student with water. I mean, that's not, that's not that bad. That's just year four antics. That's not bad. Hello, George. About a month ago, my man made me go to Tesco by myself to get the weekly shot because she was ill. So I went by, I hated every second of it. So I was rushing the whole time. When I got to check out, I was packing everything up so fast. I accidentally grabbed the cashier's hand and pulled it towards the bag and he fell off his chair. He got back up and shook his head at me. And I felt so bad. I tried to give him an extra five pounds as compensation. But I refused to take it. Then to top it all off, as I was going home on the bus, one of the bags ripped and milk spilled all down the aisle. I've mentally never recovered from this and don't think I ever will. Yeah, that's rough. That's what I the, the second one hits close to home because I was once stood in a Sainsbury's and I had some of the like past jars of pasta sauce. I was like, I, I was carrying them because I was like, I was like, I don't need a basket. I don't need a truck. I don't need anything. I could just, I'm just in here for a few bits. And then of course I buy like, actually no, I did have a basket. I just sort of rested it on top and one of them fell off and, and shattered. And I was just left looking at it and all the staff looked at me and I felt really, really, really bad because I was like, I was going to be like, oh, do you need any help? But obviously I was absolutely no help to them. So it was just best if I, if I got out of the way. So I just very, very uh, solemnly <laughs> self-scanned my items and left. It was so fucking embarrassing because they, they all just gave me looks as if I was like pathetic. And honestly, I understand. Hey, George, I wanted to tell someone this story, but I couldn't have embarrassment. I am here to listen to your embarrassing stories and publish them <laughs> to my hundreds of thousands of viewers. I was around 12. My cousin had come back from England. So me and my cousin were staying at our grandma's house and there were no bathrooms unless she went to the outside toilets behind the farm. We were way too scared to leave the house because it was the middle of the night. I couldn't hold it any longer and my cousin was making me laugh so bad I literally peed it and left the biggest stain on the carpet. Only thing I can think of is 
is to clean it with my t-shirts and I stuffed them into my backpack. I woke up and the stain was gone. I'm not sure if it got clean or if it dried perfectly. It definitely got cleaned. A bit later, I went home and my mum was wondering why my clothes smelled like piss. My cousin still has the video of me cleaning my own pee. That's kind of embarrassing. But in the grand scheme of these uh, embarrassing emails I've received, this is this one ain't so bad. This one ain't so bad. But embarrassing story, drinking my friend's blood. Um, So when I was about five in primary school, I decided to tell everyone in the class that I was a vampire because I thought they'd think I was cool, I guess. I don't know. Uh, to be fair, I'm actually five in primary school. That's, that's infant school, right? But I was about to say, like, in year five, you'd probably think that was cool. But that was, that might be a bit too old for this. But yeah, definitely at five. If someone told me they were a vampire, I'd think they were the, the sickest person in the world. For most of the day, I had been pretending that I had to stay in the shade because the burning sun would melt my skin. So my friends very kindly helped me hop between patches of shade in the playground to avoid my very painful death. But then during the last playtime of the day, my best friend tripped and cut her knee and it started bleeding. She started crying naturally, but instead of getting a teacher, I thought it'd be the perfect time to really play into my vampire identity. I thought it would look a bit off if I was able to just ignore the blood that was right in front of me. Yeah, you're right. You're covering all bases here. You're making sure your story is airtight. A vampire would never do that. You're absolutely right. So I just started licking the blood that was dripping down her leg. It tasted sort of metallic, but sort of I didn't really enjoy it. So I knew the vampire life was, wasn't for me. Anyway, I then heard, what are you doing? And slowly looked to the side and I saw my teacher staring at me in complete disgust disgust and fear. I can still picture the way she looked at me. I can only imagine she'd never seen a child lick another child's bleeding leg as she's hysterically cried before. The teacher left within a year from what I know. I like to think it was because of me, but who I don't I think you're giving yourself a bit too much credit. I feel as though kids do stupid shit like this all the time. Like this is this might be a bit more on the I was sat on a train minding my own business when I felt something brush against me. I saw the people behind me had stood up and were reaching up to the baggage story, so I returned to minding my business, assuming they brushed against me. Anyway, it happened and again, something touched my head. So I looked at the bloke who said sorry and looked terribly embarrassed. With my headphones still blaring, I smiled and turned away. Then they tapped me and pointed to the luggage rack. I reached to take my headphones off and that's when I felt it. Slime. Turns out it was a family and the little girl had put a jar of slime in their bag, which had unfortunately for me ruptured directly. But what is it with kids and slime? Why do they love slime so much? The whole time I had been getting the world's slowest Nickelodeon slash Dick and Dom type gungeon and I was so sat there oblivious. Anyway, they apologized very, very sincerely many times and looked mortified. The little girl cried. But from what she said, it was more about the loss of the slime than the gunging of a stranger. Yeah, that is quite embarrassing to be sat on a train with slime in your hair. Everyone's just going to think you're like a goo goo gaga baby who watches slime videos on YouTube. I was in primary school at the time and I was 12 years old. You're not in primary school at 12 years old. This story already has holes in it. There was a girl in the bar from taking her goddamn time and I pissed myself and and the piss was all over me and my chair and the floor. The teacher pulled me aside and asked me what happened. Me being the great fucking liar I am, acted all confused and disoriented. The teacher contacted my parents and told them she thought I had a seizure and I was taken to get MRIs and the doctors or whatever. They concluded I had seizure activity in my brain. Everyone was convinced that I had a seizure that day. But in reality, I just really needed to piss and couldn't hold it in. I turned 14 in August and still I've told no on this story. I got diagnosed with autism a couple of days after my birthday. And have found out that I can lie really fucking well. Boy, is that like a trait of your autism? You're just a really good liar. When I was younger, I took a trip to a Holocaust museum whilst in a mock-up barrack. I got a hard on thinking about how hot Anne Frank was. I was 13. Oh, I can't in good conscience laugh at that. I once went to a charity shop while my mum and sister went into a Costa next door. I came out of the charity shop having bought nothing and I went to wait outside Costa. I saw what I thought was my sister sitting down at a table next to the window and decided it would be funny to stand in the window and and wait to see how long it would take to notice me. I only stood there for about 30 seconds before I noticed my mum and sister were walking out of the door. I felt so embarrassed at that moment. Luckily, the girl who I thought was my sister never noticed me. That's not that bad. I've seen white. That's the most tame one in this video. Oh god, this okay, this is uh, this uh, this is uh, a long. This is more traumatic than embarrassing, but a confession nonetheless. This is about his dad. All right, this is this is him and his dad in the car together. He hands me his phone to play my music on speaker, and I guess he didn't realize that search history exists or he doesn't care. But I, I kept on seeing man. And sinks in mud on YouTube search history. I thought it was weird and didn't think much of it until one day another woman texted him while I was playing my music asking him to take her to a swampy place and smear mud on her tits. When I found out my father has a mud king 
anything and he doesn't know I know about it. We also watch you together. So if this does make it into the video, then hi dad. I hope you're not watching this together. That would just be, be a really awful way of him finding out that you know this. I went to a concert and halfway through the gig during one of the songs, the whole crowd is told to get low and jump on the beat drop. I went down and pissed all over someone's knees behind me because I held it in for six hours to get the best view at this gig. Then the beat dropped and I wasn't going to acknowledge I pissed all over someone and apologize. So I just carried on having a jolly time moshing with my mate. If you went to a Hara concert in 2021 and got wet knees during Friends, it wasn't me and it definitely wasn't piss. Oh, I would. I'm going to say that's understandable. If you had to hold it in for six, why would you, why would you hold it in for six hours though? I guess to get, yeah, the best for you, but still. So this all happened not too long ago. My mum takes me to work quite a lot. I'm a very shy person. There was a toilet where my mum works, but the toilet was where everyone can see and can hear. What well, they could see you when you're on the toilet. They can see you when you're on the toilet. That's mental. But, oh, do you mean they can just see like the door of the toilet? Not like they can actually see you on the toilet. Okay, that's that's probably what it is. And can hear when you flush the toilet. And I thought it would be awkward if I went. So I just take cups from the cupboard and piss in them. I'm a girl, by the way, so it's harder for me. I go in the back room and piss. And after I'm done, I just tip the piss into the sink. And where my mum works, she offers people cups of tea. So every night, oh, oh, oh no, I always think how many people who have drank from the cup that I have pissed in and have no idea. Oh, that is bad. That is so bad. You can't be doing that. You cannot be doing that. As you all saw, I was eight years old on holiday in Mallorca. How do you, is that Mallorca? Mallorca. So there's Menorca and then there's Mallorca. I, I, Mallorca. Mallorca with my family. And one night we went to a bingo hall and that had a play area outside. As you do as a kid, I made friends with some of the other kids on the climbing frame and slides. I was having a blast but soon realized I needed to shit. I was so worried that my new friends would be gone by the time I came back. So I did the most logical thing I could think of. I shit myself. Right. Eight years old. It's way too old to be coming to those sorts of conclusions. All the kids started to smell the shit and left me <laughs> anyway. What you think? You thought they were just gonna stick around? My mum shouted for me as we were going back to the hotel and I waddled back to the hotel, keeping my distance from my family so they <laughs> wouldn't know my shame. Once we got back, I sprinted to the bathroom and tried to flush my solid underwear down the toilet, but it wouldn't go down and it overflowed. Panicking, I tried to shove my <laughs> shove it down my foot. My mum came in to see me, my foot in the toilet and shitty water everywhere. I got shouts at my uh Fucking hell. The thing is, right, I think I have some embarrassing stories, but in comparison to a lot of you lot, I'm golden. One time I went to Fort Park and by the end of the day, I was feeling extremely tired and dizzy after all the rides. My dad insisted that we went on Nemesis one more time before we left. I felt awful whilst on the ride. And as it came into the station, I was sick everywhere and everyone waiting to get on was watching. I had to walk to the toilets with cheesy sick, cheesy sick, cheesy sick all over my shorts. And when I came out, I looked over at Nemesis and the screen said it was closed and everyone was leaving the queue. This was about an hour before Fort Park closed and my dad went and asked why I and they said some kid was sick all over the ride and there was no point reopening it since it was taking so long to clean up. But that is so embarrassing. I feel bad for the, like, you, but like the queues at Fort Park are absurd. The queue for Nemesis is probably about an hour. I feel so bad for the poor bastards that were right at the front and then they had to leave because you were sick all over the ride. I used to see this girl I like chew her gum in class and stick it under the table. I used to wait till she would get up at the end of class, drop my bag and pick the gum from under her table where she stuck it and chew it and <laughs> I was kissing her. I did this a few times and even once I got a pack of gum and left them on her chair for her to pick them up. So I made sure she always had gum to chew. <laughs> <laughs> a few months ago, my brother, who is 16 years old, decided he was too lazy to go down one flight of stairs to a toilet, so pissed in jars instead. He was found out when our dog knocked one of the jars down. Well, he just had numerous jars in his room, like you open up his wardrobe and it's just stacked with jars, like a pantry of piss. Vomi driving lesson. Wow, what's this going to entail? Hi, George. The only thing that could possibly make me feel good about this story is if it features in one of your videos. Well done. Here it is. But anywho, it's my second driving lesson where it all went wrong. We were almost finished. Coming down a steep hill, I felt strange and suddenly with no prior warning, I projectile vomited all over my driving instructor, the car, myself, and practically plastered the windscreen. I immediately started crying while covered in vomit. It was not a good look for me. Of course, I had to get out of the car to get back into the passenger seat. I then went home. My parents were facing the TV. Thank God they didn't turn around. They asked me, how was your driving lesson? I replied, good, thanks. And then took my sad, could they not smell you? And then took my sad, vomit-covered self upstairs to cry in the shower for an hour. P.S. It was food poisoning from a scotch egg. How'd you get food poisoning?
poisoning from a scotch egg. But the first time I had sex, the boy in the striped pajamas was on. I'm Jewish, he wasn't. Now I'm gay. Lovely. Hello, George. I am here to tell my embarrassing story about what happened around two years ago. I was traveling back home on a Sunday morning, heavily hungover from the night prior on a bus. When I started to experience terrible stomach pains and cramps. As the pains got gradually worse, I shouted to the bus driver to stop the bus immediately on the side of the bus route due to the fact that I thought my bowels were about to explode. Couldn't you wait to the next stop? That was like a stop like every two minutes. So I ran off the bus, squatted down on the pedestrian lane as a waterfall shit blasted at my ass on the sidewalk. As I am squeezing my life away, I look up to the people walking and watching me. However, I was too distracted by the fact there was no toilet roll and <laughs> that there was nothing but leaves because apparently there isn't toilet roll on the side of the road for situations like these. Despite the embarrassment I'd already endured, a woman felt bad enough to throw a Kleenex through the small window of the bus I was on and would have blown away if I didn't catch it while in penguin stance. After my little accident, I had to slowly back onto the bus and sit as if it, I am just shat out this year's worth of breakfast lunch. Oh my god, man. Oh god, that is actually so- that's rough. That's rough. I'm laughing a little bit, but that is so rough. I'm so sorry. My friend and I were drunk this one time and we decided to make some burgers. I got food poisoning and vomited on my friend's dress and her boyfriend and one of my friends did as well. And then she decided to shove my phone up her ass. I, but what? Sorry, I don't understand the correlation between vomiting and then your friend shoving your phone up her I, Anyway, moving on. It was my bronze DOV trip and at the campsite, we had a water tap to clean plates and things. So I was cleaning my shit and suddenly my crush appears out of nowhere nowhere and starts asking how I am and stuff. So I say, I'm good. And we both just stand there for a while. But I got too nervous and I swear at- I <laughs> I got too nervous and I let out the loudest shot ever. But you talk, you talk to a woman and you literally just shit yourself. What? The aftermath of this event is that the whole school knew what happened. I ended up having to change schools. I bet you did, fella. <laughs> oh, that is awful. That is so embarrassing. Oh, I messaged my friend from her dead nan's Facebook. Did you hack her dead nan's Facebook account? Hello, George. I must profess I am not a terrible person, but I did a terrible thing. Thing. A few years ago, back in college, I had broken my phone. My best friend had mentioned it to her parents and they all very kindly lent me my friend's recently deceased Nan's phone to use until I could buy a new one. I have to note that I also met this now deceased kind grandmother previously. In one lesson, my friend and I have been annoying each other and generally being very snarky and snappy at each other. I do not remember what was said to me to try and justify what I did next. Oh my God, I thought this was just like an accidental thing. Like you're on your, you're on your, your friend's dead grandmother's phone as you are and you accidentally messaged off your Facebook account. You're like, oh, Oh, whoops, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to make you think your nan had been resurrected. No, this was not an accident. This was deliberate. When going through the phone, I noticed Facebook Messenger. Curious. I opened it and found it was still logged into my friend's dead nan's Facebook account. To get back at my friend, I said, I time to send the words. I love you to my friend from her dead nan's account. Seeing the notification on her phone, she was obviously quite shocked and upset. Really? Really? I wouldn't have thought so. You only messaged her from her dead nan's Facebook account saying, I love you. Ah. Oh. And to add insult to injury, I didn't even apologize and instead said, go cry, bitch. Was that also from the Dead Nan's Facebook account? That is mental. That's mental. I'm still horrified to this day that I even thought I went through with something like this. But fortunately, after profusely apologizing, my friend forgave me and we've been friends ever since. Now, looking back upon this story as a funny anecdote, I still think I'm going to hell. Thank you for listening. That was awful. That's a hor that's horrible. I was lucky enough to take part in an internship in France just as a heat wave hit the country. The accommodation was self-catering, so one sunny day I treated myself to some yogurt from Lidl. The yogurt was amazing, and being in such a good mood, I decided to go for a run around the campus to get familiar with the space, not realizing the unsuspecting yogurt was in fact spoiled by the extreme summer heat. Mid-run, I started to feel a few twinges of what I assumed was a stitch. The twinges turned to cramps, the cramps turned to intense pressure and pain. I turned back and start making my way back to my block, when one particularly violent cramp forced a fire at me, but the fart was not alone. Cheeks clenched, I waddled slash ran as fast as I could without opening the floodgates to get back to the flat. Just as I get to the door, the pain is too much and I can't clench any tighter. A violent wave of diarrhea was released and held captive by my tight workout leggings. The block a 
the flats had no lifts and I was on the top floor, climbing the stairs, dislodged the wet mass. And I'm not reading the rest of this. I'm not reading the rest of this. Fucking hell. Oh my God. The fu I'm not going to show this, obviously, because this is anonymous and I respect everyone's anonymity. But this person has an animated Gmail picture. What the hell? What? So I'm trying to read this, but it's distracting me. So when I was around five-ish, I was at an indoor pool with some family members and some friends. And I really needed a piss, so I asked one of my friends. One if my friend. God, come on. This is important. It's a, it's a George M video. Spell properly. Where the toilet was, I wasn't in the pool at the time. And he said just to go in the pool, so I did. I pulled my pants all the way down while standing on the edge of the pool and pissed all up. Oh, all over people. I was then told to do it inside of the pool and replied, ew. I was a fucking strange child. I still think about that to this day. What's he just used the pool like a urinal? <laughs> That is embarrassing. Like, I, I, I'd hold that over myself for the rest of my life if that was me. For anyone who recognises this, I deeply apologise. Hi, George. When I was in year 10, I volunteered to help some guests in an assembly that they were doing for our school. Little did I know I'd be signing up for being Paddy McGuinness in some B-Tech version of Take Me Out in the middle of the assembly, which would be performed for every single year group set. Who thought this would be a good idea? I decided I'm not a pussy, so I agreed to it. I also did it in a cowboy hat, but that's not the worst bit. We did the show for the year sevens, and they were great and clapped at every. Thing. When we performed for the year nines, I went to introduce the single ladies. And as they walked out, it was dead silence. Not even the teachers clapped. I was stood in the middle of the stage in a cowboy hat, absolutely baffled. For some reason, I decided to clap violently and called them a dead crowd so they would clap along. This half worked. Later in the show, there was some pickup line section. And because I was already nervous, when one of the girls said their pickup line, I yelled a bazinga and zing at the audience. I am still utterly mortified. And after all the performances, I was known as the girl in the cowboy hat. And people would ask me if they could be in the next take me out at least i'm not but yeah it's not, it's not that embarrassing you're just playing along you're just playing along it was a bit of fun a bit of fun this was a few years ago now but one time when picking up my child from nursery i put them in the back of my car and started to drive home as normal a few minutes later i got a call from the nursery saying they had seen me leaving with a child despite mine still being there i was initially confused by what they said but when i looked at the back seat of my car to my horror i saw someone else's child there turns out i accidentally picked up the wrong child i quickly drove back and apologized profusely I hate you going back there every time after this because I felt so embarrassed. How much can you not tell your child apart from others? I thought it was like a mother's instinct or something. Right, what is this? A bit of context beforehand. A few years ago, I lived next door to Gary Lineker. That's quite the neighbour to have. However, he never knew me. A couple weeks ago, I was on the train going home. The people further down the carriage who were talking quite loudly throughout the journey. When the train got to the station, it turned out one of the passengers talking was Gary Lineker. We made brief eye contact and we both gave that small smile that would happen if you don't want to bother a famous person. Then for whatever reason, I asked if he was my old neighbor in accidentally the most awkward tone possible. He, of course, had not a fucking clue what I was on about. So he looks at me confused before I said the road name. He hesitated for a few seconds before saying yes. There was just a moment of awkward silence as we got off the train. I then walked to him again saying, shit, I've just realized who you were. Knowing full well who he was and he didn't know who I was. How can you not know who Gary Lynn? He, even if you're not into football, he's in the, all the Chris Bats. It would also be worth noting that it was a really warm night and I was wearing this massive Metallica hoodie and these weirdly tight shorts which added to the strange person aura. I had to emphasize my communication difficulties to try and make it sound less weird, which only backfired and made me seem like, <laughs> like a generally odd person. This was then followed by another awkward silence before we went separate ways. I then went home and didn't speak for the rest of the day. Look, I'd have flashbacks every time I put match of the day on if that was me. Hello George, so one day in year nine me and my biology classmates went to the zoo to look at animals and learn about evolution. On the bus, I unknowingly drank about one litre of water with three laxatives in it because my mate thought it would be funny. When the bus parked at the zoo, my mate ran off the bus to go to the toilet and left his bag. Me thinking I'll play a prank on him, pulled down my pants and went to fight into the bag. I ended up shitting violently all throughout his bag, drenching all his books and laptop in liquid shit. I was shocked and quickly zipped it back up, hoping he wouldn't notice. He came back and felt the very obvious weight difference and smell. And I sat there while he just discovered a heapy pile of shit in his bag and a brown stain on my shirt from trying to clean the bag. He moved schools a few months later because everyone called him Poop Pack Larry. That's just a shit name. No pun intended. And I haven't seen or talked to him in four years. I saw someone wank on the plane. It was a dark and stormy 2019 night. I'm lying. It was quite sunny. I was halfway through watching a Clockwork Orange. I've never 
haven't known of a plane showing a clockwork orange, but anyway, it's not really a very good plane film, is it? Before realising that I desperately needed a piss, it was so bad that I was getting sent cease and desist from my bladder. Excellent descriptive writing there, my friend. So I walked to the bathroom with a totally confident piss-needing gait, and I opened the unlocked door to reveal a man the same age as me, right in the middle of his climax. After being thoroughly traumatised, I just sat next to the bathroom door and waited while contemplating jumping out the window, but I realised if I did that, I couldn't play Minecraft, <laughs> couldn't play on my Minecraft survival world. The wanker quite literally walked out trying to avoid making eye contact with me. I walked inside and had a godly piss like P. Shiver worthy piss. Thanks for the info on that, pal. Last year, while having a meal in a nice pub in Cheshire with my family, Roy Keane, my hero, walked in and took a seat in our table near us. Roy Keane is my football hero, so I was crapping myself. We finished our meal as I contemplated whether or not to go over and get a picture. If it was anyone else, I would have been fine, but he's a pretty scary guy. If you know, you know. Yes, I do know. In the end, I decided to suck it up and ask if me and my little brother could take a picture. He said, sure, and moved up on the seat so we could sit next to him. At this point, I was literally shaking uncontrollably and kept on saying, sorry, I don't know why. However, when I went to sit down, I knocked into the table and his pint of beer toppled over and spilled all over him. He was absolutely drenched. We helped clean up and left as soon as possible. The next week, Roy went on the overlap and said that... <laughs> He absolutely hated absolutely hate bad interactions. I still have nightmares and I don't think I will ever recover. Sorry, Roy. Oh, that's terrible. You got you, you basically got subtweeted by Roy Keane on a podcast. I was really clumsy as a kid, so constantly broke phones and often had to have people's old phones. One time I had broken my phone, so I had to borrow my mum's phone, which was not ideal as it was a bit shitty and still connected to her Google account. One time I was scrolling through the pictures as there weren't many and found nude, pic nude photos of my mum's boyfriend that she had taken as a joke with him. I tried to delete these photos, but couldn't due to them being connected to an account and stored in Google Photos. I was distraught and cried over finding this as I couldn't get these photos off this phone. I felt deeply ashamed having to take the phone to school every day. I was terrified so I would find them. Eventually, I managed to delete them, but the image still lingers in my mind from time to time. Nobody knows about this and I will never tell anyone publicly what you've told me. Right, bear with me on this. So when I was like seven, I walked in on my parents doing the deed and obviously my mom lost her collective shit I ran away. That ain't the story, just context. So like four weeks later, I was about to go to bed and I was raised in a family where a kiss goodnight to both your parents was normal. And I remember seeing my parents that one time tongue kissing. Now, I was a stupid impressionable child and I thought I'd been giving the goodnight kiss wrong the entire time. So I said, goodnight Padre and leapt on this man and just started tongue kissing the fuck. He pushes me up and starts screaming. I can never be able to do it again. Oh, I think about that when I'm trying to sleep now and it makes me weep. Fucking hell, man. There's some girl for a date off Bumble. It started off all right, to be fair. She was good looking, funny and all that. It was going all right until my hay fever kicked in. This was spring slash summer last year, by the way. I sneezed unexpectedly and snot flew all over her dress. Like, all over, all over it. How much fucking snot do you have in your nose? I said sorry. She gave me a disgusted look, bought an Uber home, and I got <laughs> blocked on everything to say the least. Really wasn't my proudest moment. Hey, George, when I was 14, my dad would work night shifts and my mum would sometimes invite her friends around for dinner and drinks. One night she had brought someone over and we're in the living room. I needed a glass of water, but you had to walk through the living room to get to the kitchen in our house. I walked in to find my mum being railroaded by a man on the sofa. She had been having an affair. Why would she do that when you're in the house? She's not very subtle, is she? She had been having an affair behind my dad's back. They froze, and I just decided to proceed with getting a drink instead of just leaving. I then bolted back to my room. Time went on. My parents split up, and I was introduced to this man who I walked in on shagging my mum as my new stepdad. They've been married 12 years, and we have spoken about this incident to this day. Traumatized. Hi George, I'm writing this on behalf of my friend by the way. So when me and my friend were 11, he got a hamster called Eric. He used to keep Eric on his desk in his bedroom. One day Eric's cage needed cleaning out because we saw the sawdust and hay were dirty and the cage started to smell. So my friend being 11, he took Eric out of his cage and put him in one of those plastic hamster balls so he could run around whilst he cleaned the cage. After he put fresh hay and sawdust in there for Eric, he thought it still smelled a bit weird. So he decided the best option would be to spray the cage with links. Long story short, he put Eric back in and gassed him. Eric was in a shoebox by the following evening. The thing is, that's that is something a kid would do. Like, how are you supposed to know that hamsters can't have the ocean? I didn't know that until just now. Hey George, so for background, I do a lot of theatre. I met my ex while doing a show last September and we started going out, blah blah blah. He was a full-blown theatre kid who sang a lot all the time. Skip to our first time. Background, I was not a virgin, he was, so this was literally his first time. And we had Rapunzel on in the background because his family were down.
downstairs and we didn't want them to hear. He started singing Mother Knows Best Full Fear to Belt Midway Through. And I didn't break up with him. In fact, we could, he continued to do this every time we had sex until he, until he broke up with me in March. Yeah, you know what the most embarrassing part about that is? He broke up with you. <laughs> Once when I was 13, I drew a picture of a really hot teacher I had and gave her massive tits with her saying, drink my milkies in a massive speech bubble. My teacher found the drawing and she rang my parents after school to ask why the fuck I drew this. They then asked me to explain myself and I was trying to explain. <laughs> I cried so hard I threw up. <laughs> Not kidding, this was when I was in year seven. My class went to a bowling alley for a school trip. It got boring after an hour because bo bowling, bowling's sick. What are, you, what are you on about bowling is shit? One of my friends said that he was going to the bathroom, so naturally we all decided to watch him shit. What? He went into the stall and started taking a dump. Using a coin, I unlocked the door and me and my friends laughed at our friend shitting. The friend got pissed and started smacking everybody with the, with the used toilet paper. He fished out of the toilet. We all ran away, but after a few minutes, I decided to come back. I didn't see any of my other friends in the bathroom, but I noticed there was someone in the stall my friend was in before my stupid brain thought it was my friend back to finish so i unlocked the door and i was met with my teacher taking a shit he yelled at me for 10 minutes before finally going back to the group i got suspended yeah that's un it's understandable i would i would if i was that teacher i would suspend you lost all my friends for stepping on a dog hello george this is a recent story and the people involved watch your channel so they will know who i am if they are watching so two days ago me and my friends were at the park and as i was standing up to go to the bin a little dog ran up to us and I'm talking about those small dogs that can fit in a woman's purse. The thing is, I didn't see it coming. So as I stood up and took a step, I stood on the dog. I heard a snapping noise and then a yelp. And then I looked down to see that I'd stood on the dog and squished him. I mean, like, you must have put some weight on the dog if you squished it. You must be so painfully unaware of your surroundings. The owner came running up to me, screaming and crying. And I started crying. The woman made me come to the vet with her in her car, even though I said no. But she insisted that she would take me to court if I didn't. So I went to the vet with her. And turns out they couldn't they couldn't save the dog. My friends hate me because they think I did it on purpose. The lady called my mum and told her I purposefully killed her dog, and I am grounded. And all all I have is my Kindle tablet, which I am sending this email off. This is peak. This is like you are unaware. You are an idiot. If you manage to squash a dog under your foot, you're stupid. Actually, it depends on how big the dog was. You said it can fit in a purse, but how big is that? Like that big? Because if you stepped on a dog that was like that big, that that's understandable. That's basically like a, an, a stupid squirrel at that point. But if it was like a, you know, like a chihuahua, like someone, something that big, you're so unaware. George, please help me. And to my friends, I didn't mean to step on him. I swear, please be my friends again. Yeah, go on, be, be, be a friend again. I, I don't think she meant to kill the, uh, the dog. I, 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 don't, I don't think. So me and my nan were having a movie night on Sunday. Nothing out of the usual, but how we watch movies is the TV is connected to my phone. Now we, while we were halfway through The Greatest Showman, I got a boner. So I said to nan that the phone died so I could have a wank in the toilet, but my kink is feet. Oh God, I, I thought I'd have a wank and then go to bed, but the phone was still connected to the TV. So my nan was watching some ASMR feet play. I walk out and see the TV, me and my nan have not spoken about this because she's dead. She Did she die from shock from the ASMR feet play? Before seeing my GCSE maths paper two exam, I thought it'd be funny to remove the protractor from a guy's pencil case. This guy looked especially nervous and it looked like he was on, almost on the verge of tears. I took it out when he went to the loo about five minutes before the exam and he didn't realize. What's pretty crazy is the poor guy was sitting one forward and to the left of me in the exam hall so I had a pretty clear view of him and he was still completely oblivious to the missing protractor. Subsequently, by chance, there was a 12 mark question completely relying on the protractor. I realized whilst doing this question that the boy whose protractor I had stolen had his hand up for one of the invigilators and I guess he was asking for a protractor. I saw the invigilators shake their head as they're not allowed to lend stationery to candidates in the exam room. I sat watching with regret with his protractor in my hand seeing a distraught guy with his head on his desk. That's so mean man. Tell you what, invigilators are dickheads aren't they? Invigilators were some of the biggest dickheads. Why can't they just lend stationery? It's not gonna it's, it, it doesn't give them an unfair advantage. Hey, George, so this story isn't about me, but my sister. So me and her are very big fans of you and Alex. A few months ago, I was using her, my sister's phone, because mine was broken at the time, and she had gone in the shower. Anyways, as I was on there, a notification came through from Wattpad. That day, I discovered she reads fan fictions about you. I am still traumatized from what I saw. I never <laughs> I never told her that I know about it. Oh, well, she, she might know now. Nutted so hard, I passed out and had to go to hospital. Hospital. When I was 13, I had a routine of doing the deed in the bathroom right before getting 
in the shower. One night after about a week of abstaining from this habit, I decided to give in to my compulsions. As I finished, I got I got up a little fast. This combined with the fact I have pretty low iron levels caused me to pass out and it hit my head on the corner of the shower. My mum heard and rushed in only to find me covered in spunk and leaking blood from my head. We haven't mentioned it since. One time when I was seven, I was eating mashed potatoes and I left the cage open to my sister's hamster and it somehow got into the mashed potatoes and I accidentally stabbed it with my fork while I wasn't looking and it bled. I swear, hamsters always die in the most fucking outrageous ways. Like, you thought, you thought the hamster was mashed potato, so you stabbed it with a fork. I hid behind my sister's wardrobe and she found it like two weeks later because it was smelling really bad. No one has ever found out it was me. What, when you, <laughs> there was like fucking four puncture marks in it. No one suspected a thing. A 21 male met a foreign girl while on a night out. She, also 21, called me often to hang out and smoke. After about two months, she kissed me and asked if I wanted to fuck. Shortly after, she explained she's married to a guy in the army. Why, why would you be married at 21? But anyway, I know it's wrong, but I kept seeing her and sleeping with her. While she was home, she insisted that we use the car to do the deed. One day when I came to see her, I saw her and her mother and father-in-law working on the engine or something. I did a quick 180 and went back home. I think the embarrassing part is I think I love her even though it's clear it isn't going to work out with me and her. Or oh, she has to be married to him for another two years before she can legally live here. So I can't, and I can't imagine I'm going to marry her. This all started in about March. Yeah, maybe bro. Break it off, mate. Just, maybe just break it off. I once sucked the sweat out of my female friend's panties to prove that I loved her. <laughs> and the subject of this email is very embarrassing. I am ashamed to type. You should be. <laughs> How does that break? I took a selfie with a World War II veteran for Instagram. So when I was in year eight, age 12, I'm now 20. I was so obsessed with being popular and having an Instagram slash wanting to know celebrities. Oh God. A World War II veteran came to our school to give a speech about what the war was like. After the assembly had finished and everyone was asking questions, I put my hand up and asked for a selfie in front of my whole year and our teacher. Oh no, I thought you would have just like gone up to him and gone, oh, can I have a picture with you, Mr. World War II veteran? Not put your hand up in an assembly full of your peers and teachers. I got, oh, can I have a selfie with you? I got my picture taken with him and talked to him. I lied saying I was a part of a World War II reserve group for veterans and he believed it. That is a very good lie to come up with as a 12 year old. That is, a, that is an elaborate lie for a 12 year old. I feel kind of bad because he was really nice and like 90 years old. I was actually an idiot and I think I still have the fight with somewhere, but I rage deleted it off everything. Anyway, RIP Joe, the World War II veteran. RIP Joe. Hi George, this one was so embarrassing at the time but now every time i tell the story i cry from laughing so i was in the talking stage with this guy whose name started with d important and i decided to send him a nude like full frontal and everything out apparently someone in my college diploma chat message right as i clicked d's name and sent without thinking i sent the nude to my college group chat with 37 members ah Terrifying. Right, I'm gonna leave it there for this video. Um, if you have an embarrassing story, send it to this email right here. You'll be anonymous and I might read it out in the next video. See you in a bit.